failed. Read email from Cora. You failed it forever. How dare you? That's funny. So I'm supposed to go with Liam and Cora down to Eos, the first human nexus colony. And Gil, and a few other people. They just can't stop coming up with new reasons to come back to here, frankly. But here we go again. Yep, neither of you. There we go. Descent is green. Coordinating, path is calm. Weird fade out. Huh. If a fade out like that's necessary, I almost wonder why it, whatever loading is involved doesn't handle before the little walking animation. So Liam wants to be exactly oh, right here. My little event for everyone. Wow, Liam, it's a rock. Dromos is suited up and ready to host. Ready for the exchange, Pathfinder. Grab your civvies. Going to get hot. How did you do all this? Well, it didn't take much. A ball, flat ground. Hustle would start games at refugee camps. I didn't get it then, but after the attack here and the shit with Varan's rescue, I wanted to try something. Low tech. What do you think? It's good to get people's minds off of all the crap we go through. Not just that. I didn't do it to distract them. We don't get distracted. We go head on. When it's life or death, you have to. No one's living or dying because of this. They're here because they want to be. I didn't get how important that is. Maybe that choice is how we stop being outsiders. Check the play! Free kick for charging! No charge for matchmaking. <laughs> what? We're lucky to have you. <laughs> you better believe it. You too, Ryder. You're a jerk sometimes, but as Pathfinder? This is because of you. Switch up. Ready to get in the game? Yeah. The Pathfinder should make an appearance. Try to keep up, Costa! Don't count on it. I'm complete rubbish. That set of armor cannot be good for soccer. Also, how did everyone else know how to play soccer? That was an Asari and a... Angaran? Of all people in that shot? Like, there's tons of humans around here, but an Angaran Asari pairing for the, uh, the soccer match, huh? And how come you can set up a soccer match in like a few minutes or no big deal, but it's taken you like the last like 60 hours of the game to continually not set up the uh, movie night you keep taunting us with. When the heck is that happening? I find myself wondering like why the game felt a specific like powerful need to foreshadow movie night at the very very beginning of the playthrough and hang it over your head for the entire thing. Like that better be one hell of a specific scene full of character growth moments for the entire party. Or it'll be or it'll never live up to the hype that the game itself has now put it into. Like it better be like that bar scene from Inquisition where every single character's together and has nice, really good dialogue and you get to see them all interact with each other meaningfully and stuff. I'm good. You're here. Yeah, so listen, she's only got a minute or two, and she's in rare form today, just to warn you. She's here kickstarting repopulation protocols, reversing the chemical procreation blockers for colonists. Calls it boosting the batter. She's gonna talk your ear off about your civic duty as a man. 
That is what she's here to do. The woman takes her job seriously. Hey, if you're cool with it. I mean, makes no never mind to me. No chance I'll ever oops a baby into the world. Am I interrupting something? Ah, Jill. About time. This is... Save it. I asked you both to stop by, remember? Ryder? Pleasure. I know we're all very busy, so I have only one question for you. You want to know if you can reverse my chemical procreation blocker? You baby. I see my reputation precedes me. The question is... What the hell did you do to him? It's like he's an adult or something. He can even have a mature conversation without it degrading into pot shots. Unless I take it there. What's your secret? I sneaked into the stasis pods and switched him with another baby. <laughs> My boy's in good hands. Okay, you're both off the hook. So glad I got to meet you, Ryder. Likewise. Wait, did she... Did she just go back to her shuttle? Did she specifically come all the way to EOS to land here to talk to me on EOS? Where, even though I flew here to talk to her also, and like we could have met anywhere, including wherever she already was. It's really weird to see her coming in off a shuttle specifically. Like that's never happened in any other context in the entire playthrough, I don't think. Weird. Alright, back to Korra then. We go warping out to the original station, then the original outpost. Be a memorial or monument when there's time. Screw that. Well, yeah, we can make a memorial or a monument, but we should also get rid of this entire place. Seriously. These are portable objects. Like, all this crap here, like, it's- you could just pick it up and put it somewhere else, and it'd be no big deal. And, like, they, these are all- it, there's, there's enough assets on this planet for, to make two more outposts. We could've used them when we were making the other outposts on different planets, or make more buildings in the outpost here, or so on. But all this time has passed in this playthrough and we're still leaving all these important assets just lying out in the open, in complete working order. Excuse me? The tint. That model was used in the first contact war dock, and Exo Wright recolored the product line to match. But they used the poster as reference, for screen accurate, any- This is the place. Ready? Well, we missed that dialogue. Damn it. Boink. Oh, I think they were saying that they, uh... Her armor's wrong because they made a movie or some kind about it and that her the armor was, like, colored based on what would look right on the screen as opposed to what looks right in real life. So there's, like, an alternate armor variant and maybe she's using the wrong one based on the movie or whatever. So where's your mystery project? Not far. Soil converter. No remnant terraformer, but it makes sandy dirt into something useful. Eventually. Add seeds, some rain, and you've got a garden. That's right. You wanted a garden of your own. It'll take years. I might not even see it. But that's okay. Asari think in centuries. Lay a foundation, then step away. Let it grow into something you might never expect. Pathfinder training was my foundation. Gave me a whole galaxy of directions I could go. I don't need someone else's plan. Just a good beginning. The first seeds of a garden. One I started with my friend. What seeds do you have? Desert flowers and grasses from across the Milky Way. Colors we don't even have names for. When they've prepared the ground. Roses, someday. Ready? One, two. Ah! Bolstering all shields. 
Huh. It's nice that she's going through with the things she talked about earlier, and like that's a that's a cool follow-up. The location's super weird though. Cause like this isn't anywhere near the settlement. So like it's in the middle of nowhere, and like the absurdity of it is highlighted by the gameplay itself, because we had to fight in open warfare in order to even get to her supposed garden location that's apparently gonna have to sit here for so long undisturbed that she might not even be around by the time it actually succeeds. And yet, she's gonna do it here. Like, that's... Why is it... She didn't say that it needs uh, even to be at the pond specifically. She's like, uh, little soil, some rainwater, and it'll do magic, is basically what she was saying. So, like, why does it need to be here when Pedro like Pedromos is over here, right? Yep. And she did it over here in a completely different canyon. Surrounded by enemies, because the uh, the wildlife is dangerous, and simultaneously the uh, like both the wildlife and the cat are here. Like the cat attacked us. They specifically dropped down in a ship and tried to murder us for trying to visit her garden location. It's maybe not a great choice of location. Ah oh, well, the game's trying to get there. The, ch the game's trying to get in its final act character development scenes. I like busting dooms. Getting all six wheels off the ground. Unfortunately, I don't know if any of them are going to be quite capable of reaching the level of, like, the heartfelt actual, mo like, ex uh, development that happened with Dirac in the Met Bay, where it's, like, one of the best, one of the best dialogue moments of the entire playthrough. And then, even comparable, there's even some decent stuff with PB. But Korra is just so boring. In fact, Korra and Vetra in particular, and really Liam outside of his loyalty mission that's super, that's like shockingly high quality. Uh, those three characters all felt, all feel weirdly abandoned by the developers. Like they stopped thinking about them at some point and then large chunks of the game barely acknowledge them and then ev ev eventually like one scene shows up here and there that just kind of comes out of nowhere and doesn't build on much or go much of anywhere. It's just not there. Like, anyone who's played a decent number of Bioware games can see that there's something missing there. And that stuff that missing is really shown by what is there for a character like Jirak in that medbay. I was literally driving at random. I should figure out where I, where I actually want to go next. New email from Vetra Kadara. Don't worry, Sid didn't do something reckless this time, as far as I know. I've just found something cool in Kadara. Want to meet me there? I'll send the nav point as an attachment. That's actually what we're doing now, where every single side, every single party member is going to have some mission to go on some planet and talk to them, basically, to do a trigger, to trigger a story scene. It'd be kind of nice if these developed while we were going through the locations the first time around, because I've already had to visit each of these planets like five times or ten times in some cases. But now I think I'm going to have to land on every single one of them again, because apparently every character has a specific affinity for every specific planet. Interesting. So I just did uh, Gil, Liam, and Korra on Eos. Now Ryder wants to go to... Uh, Vetra wants to go to Kadara. Uh, who was it? Jal wants to go to Havarl. And Suvi just said that at, said to talk to her when, she, when I have a moment. So th that's probably going to point some more too. Korra, Garden. Thanks again for coming with me. If you want to know, the plants are... We seeded our... Tyrol Ajana, handful of water, a plant from Rannoch. Common Irsal, a Thessian blossom that smells like honey. Lace and lilac, a flower that it's found on, they found on Edom Prime. And a few others. So we don't care about preserving the ecology of any of these planets at all. We're just going to introduce a bunch of other plants onto them. and That might be in, that might be in violation of uh, Ungaran rules. Or maybe they don't care because they're so war-torn that that's all that matters now. I need a break. Do you need a break? Let's go for a break. Care for some tea, Ryder? I'd love a cup. It's a cultivar originating in Sumatra. My own personal stash. Once I run out, that'll be it for Earth Tea. I keep having these thoughts. I'm never going to taste this again. I'm never gonna see that again. You're not the only one, Suvi. I have those senseless thoughts all the damn time. And? Do they bother you? It's natural. 
You'd have to be made of stone not to miss home sometimes. The universe is like a giant tapestry. I love following its threads, but it distracts me from the whole picture. My family was right there, but I was too occupied by the abstract to appreciate them. From everything you've told me, you're here because of your family. Your love of science, doesn't that come from them? Aren't you with them every time you chase down a new discovery? Ryder, that's beautiful. My mother made the implant in my head, and my father created the AI that uses it. I haven't lost them either. Thank you, Ryder. It's nice to have everyone have a little development scene. It's really weirdly timed how they're all happening at once, though. I'm not really a fond of... The quest log in this game in particular makes it super, super blatant just how much this game stri uh, syncs up progress of various parts of the game with main story missions. Because every time I do a main story mission, it's like, here's an update of the 17 missions that are no longer in hold. And then you open your email address and like, here's 20 emails about people that want to talk to you so they can have a character moment. And I'm like, they're all synced up with this exact moment? Really? Like, it's... It's so mechanic... It's so weirdly blatant with its with how mechanical it is that it's a little... Harder to buy than it should be. The game's a little too transparent. We need to talk about Sam. Dr. Taparo does not approve of how we escaped to the cat containment field on the Archon's flagship. By stopping the Pathfinder's heart? No, I do not approve. You don't like that I taught an AI to kill? <laughs> Relax, Doc. It turned out okay. Dying, even temporarily, is never okay. Ryder, Sam killed you. Yes, he brought you back, but what if he didn't? I cannot learn without the Pathfinder. That would be akin to killing a part of myself. Your lines of code, you can't die. Hurting me goes against Sam's design. Because AI have never acted against their designs before. <sighs> Look. I'm not against Sam. I'm not against you, Sam. But my job's hard enough without an AI stopping your heart. Even to save your life. All right. I'll find a new party trick. Have Gil teach you three card Monty or something. Lexi, I apologize for any distress I have caused you. <sighs> and I'm sorry for calling you lines of code. You're more than that. Even if you don't have cells to prove it. Wow, she turned around on that entire response really quickly. She had such a negative response that I was like, Oh, I apologize two seconds later. Need something? I'll let you get back to it. Ev Evidently not. Alright. Time to just check in with the other co-pilot. I think that's about it. I checked with, with all the crew recently. It'd be, yeah, it'd be nice if the stuff was a little more organically spread throughout the game, just because the game has been so sparse on character development otherwise. Cellulolysis would be hugely inefficient. Are you still trying to figure out how to eat Helios flora? Oh, shoot. I was talking out loud again, wasn't I? The hell you did? You can't just undo ten hours of work! I had to. Your revamp risks power imbalance between decks, something we solved back home. It's twice as efficient, just because it doesn't match your sainted specs. And now it does. As you say, deal with it. Kalo. I know, just please don't let this distract you. A real victory. Our Ark back at the Nexus. I'd almost given up hope. The Ket won't touch the Parchero again. The Militia will see to that. It's horrible to think of Salarians in Ket hands, but at least our Pathfinder made it. Thank you, Ryder. I mean it truly. If you ever need a favor, just ask. What do you think of the rest of the crew? I'll admit it. Gil's rather irritating. He insists on redesigning systems rather than maintaining them. He likes to do things his way. Hmm, that doesn't make it the right way. What do you think of the rest of the crew? Liam's quite fun. Not many humans have that kind of energy. 
I probably shouldn't have told him there are secret compartments in the armory, though. He's been looking all day. What do you think of the rest of the crew? Dr. Tapero seems nice, if quiet. It must be very different here, compared to the Hyperion. Fewer people in stasis shock. Let's keep it that way. What do you think of the rest of the crew? Given Drax's history with Salarians, it's probably better I just stay out of his way. Too bad. That grunion roast he makes smells delicious. What do you think of the rest of the crew? I think that PB needs to read a few safety manuals. What do you think of the rest of the crew? Vetra's very kind. She actually got hold of some dried seaweed snacks for me. Said I needed feeding up. What do you think of the rest of the crew? I don't talk to Cora much. She always seems so busy. There are things I'd like to ask her about your father, but it never seems like a good time. What do you think of the rest of the crew? Jal has all sorts of questions about the ship. I gave him some technical manuals. He tore right through them. I should ask him about Angaran ships. Imagine something actually designed to handle that damn scourge. What do you think of the rest of the crew? No. Oh, <laughs> if I gossip any more, I'll get in trouble. Tell me something else about the ship. Her engine's based on the Ark's Odyssey Drive, which got us through dark space. The core takes the static electricity it generates and stores it in capacitors. We basically make our own power supply. It took Serena and Tion weeks to get it working on a smaller ship. And a few electrical shocks. I'll let you concentrate. You know where I'll be. We go a little deeper into that, but I'm going to take a little bit of a break from that, I think. So that, that dialogue is stuff I missed because in the first version of the game, if you asked, if, a, if there was a dialogue option that would lead to repeatedly, like, more and more dialogue, if you clicked on it once, it would turn gray, which is the universal, the way the game universally explains that you can no longer pick something because it's just going to lead to the same thing you've already done before. But it was wrong because there would be, it was a repeatable dialogue option that would lead to different results. And so they eventually patched that. They patched it wrong, though, because now instead of going, instead of uh, being staying white, but then turning back to gray once you run out of dialogue, now it just stays white forever. So now, now those dialogue options always look like there's more you can get. So Drax war stories, or what do you think of the rest of the crew, or Sam's jokes and stuff like that. Like if she, if you, if they have no more to say, it'll still sit highlight it like there is more to say. And so they didn't really, f they didn't completely fix it. They fixed it a little bit in that they made it better, and that now people will at least click more than once on those things without think without actively defying the game's visual language of how it communicates how things work. Uh, but it's still not perfect. But that's this game, isn't it? <laughs> Entering atmosphere, LZ in sight. This game never had a season pass, did it? Just curious. Like, I, uh... I wonder how confident they were in this game when it was coming out, or if they knew that they might have been in trouble. Because there's... It's been standard practice. Every single Bioware game has had DLC ever since DLC became a normal practice, basically. So, all three Mass Effect games, all three Dragon Age games, all had DLC. Uh... This game... I don't think it has any story DLC, and I don't think it ever had a season pass, which is uh, surprising, because you expect games to just launch with season passes nowadays. It's a bit of a surprise. Maybe they knew. I think at this point, they th I think I even read that old season pass content that was planned is cancelled at this point. Or not not season pass, but old DLC that was supposed to be for the single, single player, I think, is long since cancelled. Jal! Jal! <laughs> oh. Wait. Is that bad news? No, <laughs> no. The Pathfinder is interested in where I grew up. Ryder, this is my true mother, Sahuna Amadarov. 
Nice to meet you. I know Ingaro liked the hugging. Giles told me how much he admires you. Really? He's my favorite. Smart, loyal, kind. A great shot. Writes poetry, souls. <clears throat> Mother. <laughs> I'm late for a resistance meeting. Stay clear. Your mother's in the resistance? <laughs> yes. And every child is her favorite. Everyone, this is Ryder. Hi. Look who the car can drag. Welcome in. back. This is where I spent most of my days growing up. Me, my sister, Guana, our cousin, Etta, and brother, Finn. Then Bavezil, Rolu. So wonderful to have you back. A human. Jal, you bring in someone special to meet us. Wow. Cozy. We like to live like this. Gonna give your friends some real food? Good to see you. And here's my room. My tiny sanctuary. We have a saying that I like. Home is where the heart is. <laughs> I like that. Oh, no. Who put this here? Schematics? Of... When I was seven, my aunt stole a cat weapon for me. So I took it apart to learn. And that is, was, a carkin. Pet carkin. <laughs> All fit. He died. So I also took him apart. To learn? Why not? I never show people these things, but I feel like we're family. I'm glad Ephra threw you on my ship. Hey, there's one more thing you might like. Sit there. Been interesting so far. Nice. You made that? Long ago. <laughs> it's not accurate. More of a dream, really. Just one more thing I want to take apart and figure out. Me too, Jal. Me too. Tiny Sanctuary? His room is huge. Well, how do I get a room like that? Gimme. So I was overwhelmed by the bombardment of uh, new quests when they all first showed up, but it seems like perhaps uh, they all might be just a brief little cutscene that pops up real quick. In which case, uh, we might be going back to the finishing the main story uh, sooner than expected. Next stop's Kadara. Was it Katara or Aladdin? I think it was Katara. Yeah, it was Katara. Leaving a viral. It was, it was the one that was full of pirates and stuff. That and it was a technomancer planet. By the way, boy oh boy, yeah. As we as we go through this game, I'm actually surprised how much the technomancer comparison that I that I made earlier in the playthrough was that this playthrough or was that during a podcast? It might, it might have been a podcast, but the general comparison to technomancer was Could we talk a moment? ended up being more accurate than expected. So now Kala wants to talk. I see how it is. Is it, uh, is Kalo finally deciding to act on that palpable sexual tension that he has with Gil? <laughs> and fight, stop fighting, stop fighting over the ship and just fuck already. I don't believe it. Gil's reconfigured our entire nav array. O'Connell risked a dozen spacewalks putting that in place. Damn it. Kalo, don't. Take the helm. I've had enough of this. You don't give a damn what my team and I went through to build this ship. No, I don't. I care about us surviving out here, and if that means redesigning... You don't have the right! All right, let's talk this out. What's going on? I'm doing my job, and he's undoing it because... Hell if I know! 
You weren't here. We had to get all kinds of new tech working in a single starship. Fifty-hour shifts, epiphanies, accidents. Humans can forget. Salarians can't. To me, it's all still happening. My team is here. Stripping down the Tempest like some broken radio risks everything they suffered to build. Their legacy. I could see how you'd feel that way. Seriously? Look, Callow, your people did a great job, but they're dead. And they couldn't have anticipated half the problems in Helios. Like the Scourge. If we don't adapt, we'll die too. Is that what you want their legacy to be? Gutting a complex ship out in space isn't adapting. It's irresponsible and disrespectful. Ah, uh, why do I have to pick a side? Why can't we just tell them to talk? Why can't I just mandate that they talk to each other and have like a responsible, reasonable third option where we actually come to conclusions about stuff or they have to come to me about specific changes because I'm the captain or anything else really besides literally just being like, eh, pick one to be universally right or the other. Especially since, frankly, I just don't actually know... This kind of fails as a problem additionally because I kind of just don't know what they're doing. <laughs> like, uh, when you are on... Like, Pharos, and you're dealing with a specific problem, and you're faced with a decision, you generally know what the variables of the decision are, and why you're doing what you're doing, and stuff like that. And what the consequences of each choice is. Callow and Gil, I don't know what they're doing. <laughs> They don't talk to me about the specific uh, steps they're doing and what they're doing to the ship. And I don't get to make a call, despite the fact that I'm the leader, uh, as to what's going to happen to the state of the ship or things like that. Like, it just doesn't come up. So I don't know who's being irresponsible or who's being irrational. Because it could be that Gil's being too reckless and do, and un, and unreasonable with his changes. Or it could be that Callow... Uh, is just being uh, unreasonable with his responses to stuff that totally needs to get done. But also, why can't we just go to the Nexus and work on stuff normally, like, at a place where you would actually work on ships, as opposed to being in open space? And, like, we can just go there. We go there all the time. It's easy. So, my list of... Ver my list of... My amount of information I have here is very little, and so it's basically just amounts to picking Gil or Callow and just going with one or the other. And frankly, the part where Gil uh, self... I find myself not liking Gil's approach in the first place because he uh, generally says that he just he's basically just flying by the seat of his pants. He just makes shit up as he goes along and just goes with it and doesn't plan ahead or look back. And that's generally not a great idea for the entire galaxy to rely on. The Tempest has too many new systems doing new things to just adapt on the fly. If we make changes, let's make them carefully, and with respect. She's your ship. I just hope you know what you're doing. Ryder, I... I know it's not... Thank you. Okay, it's over. Let's get back to work. The entire ship... Oh, oh well, that was a weird loading thing. The entire ship all came in just to experience that moment of, of people not getting along. Collect one, two, three, four, five, six. Any better off track? Hi. Look, you already apologized for what you did. That's more than most Krogan get. I updated Kesh, let the clan know what happened. And I'd rather be talking about something else right now, so... Are you happy now that Spender's out of the picture? Damn right I am. Maybe they'll forget to feed him while he's locked up. Breaks your hearts, huh? Heh, <laughs> heart. Just got the one left. Got any stories or advice to share? Does a pie jack scratch its butt? Tell me about the first time you fought someone. That'd be my first battle. It was during the Krogan Rebellions. I was just some snot-nosed brat back then, but my mother wanted me to get experience. At first, it was the best day of my life. 
And then my mother died on the battlefield. I'd like to hear more about your mother. She was one of the last great warlords of her generation. When my mother fell, we all did. All my people held on, sought revenge, but we splintered. Between that and the genophage, we changed. Not for the better. Is that why your clan came to Andromeda? A new start? A better future? We haven't had hope like that in a long time. Well, maybe here, with you, we'll find some. We can talk more later. Sure. It's one of the only margins in which the genophage can make sense is this crazy thing where it only existed for such a short amount of time that people are still alive from before it even started. Suvi, that woman on the Nexus, she's a widow of one of my pilots. The people you were training to explore the Scourge? Zoe's wife was lost out there. For a fellow pilot, one does the right thing. Like making sure her widow has got enough credits. It's the least I can do. The most is conquering the Scourge once and for all. We're going off to Kadaran now for Vetra. But yeah, the, uh, the, the Krogan uh, genophage is absolutely brutal because it makes a viable fetus so ridiculously rare that it makes the population basically impossible to maintain. It seems completely insane. But the people who uh, were there when it started are still alive. And Krogans last a long time. So it's why the Krogans aren't, haven't ceased to exist in the time during the span of the game and the Mass Effect franchise. 